Okay, so we've been learning Torah Pei Beis, Lesson 82, and the second chalik, the second half of the Kutmaran. This is, it's very common in Brest to learn Torah Vov, that's the sixth lesson, in Elul time, as a preparation for Rosh Hashanah. Um, Brest with Hasidim every single year, they learn that Torah, and um, this year I decided, I was thinking, you know, it'd be nice to do something a little bit different. Last year I was busy with Torah Vov. So I decided to learn this lesson. It's also a Torah that teaches us how Rabbi Nachman explains how one can do tshuva in, in the light of Rabbi Nachman's teachings. Um, it relates a lot to lesson number six, but it's a, it's a, it's a different angle. And, um, and I found while I was learning this Torah that it helped me so much. Can you hear? Is it clear? Yeah. I don't know how loud it is. Can you hear? Yeah. I found that it helped me so much in my own personal life with, uh, as you'll see the topic, with so many things that I was dealing with, it made an incredible difference um, for me in my Elul. I just felt like a completely different person. And, and that's the koach that Rabbi Nachman's Torah has. If we follow his etzes, they, it, it really helps us in life. So the Torah starts off, as most of the Torahs in the Kutzeran normally do, starts off with the Pasuk, he says in the this is the parsha a couple of weeks ago, Kiseite, and uh, it deals with Melchama, with war. Towards the end, at the end of the Torah, Rabbi Nachman ties everything back into the opening pasuk. He actually says that the idea of war is not a uh, not just confined to wars between um, different countries, but a person also has an internal has internal conflicts. They have wars that take place within themselves. And the whole idea of this lesson is how to make peace within oneself so that they don't have those, uh, the, the warring conflicts that we face day, day after day, different things going on and trying to deal with life. Rabbi Nachman teaches us through this lesson how to make peace within ourselves and it, it's, a, it's a very, very powerful teaching and it helped me tremendously in my own personal El. Rabbi Nassim of Kut relates it to Rosh Hashanah as well, so we'll try to speak about a few of the points that he says. And uh, Bezra Hashem will get something out of this. I'm basically going to say more or less the Torah outside, based on the way I understood it and explained the concepts. If anybody has any questions, they can interrupt me. That's fine. There's some of the concepts are a little bit deeper, so I would appreciate it if, if you need a little bit more explanation at any point. Just please interrupt me. I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. Which Torah? Torah. It's Torah Pebes, Pe 82, in the second half of this. Tinyona. Kutran Tinyona. So, <clears throat> Rabbi Nachman starts with a pasuk from Tehillim, Achor v'Kedem Tzaratani. Kalish Baruch Hu, when he created the world, he created Adam and Chava, right, Adam and Eve. The way he created them was one was facing forward, that was Adam, and one was facing, they were attached to each other like this, and one was facing backwards, that was Chava. And the, this whole idea of, of, of forward and backward is, is really an idea that we face in life, which there are things we're going to talk about, there are things what, that go in, a, in a, an orderly manner, and then there's everything else that goes in a disorderly manner. And that's really the way the world was created um, from day one. So, that's the way. Now, Rabbi Nachman explains what is the concept of Adam. First of all, if you take the letters of the name of Adam, you have an Aleph, a Dalid, and a Mem. Right? That goes in a chronological order. So Rabbi Nachman says that's the order of the Aleph base, it's the chronological order, it's when things in life go, as we'll say, the, the way they're supposed to go. That's the idea of Adam. Uh, on, a, on a Kabbalistic level, the name Adam, the gematria, the numerical value is 45. And Rabbi Nachman explains that that is the shame of Avaya. Avaya is one of Akash Baruch Hu's names, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. Uh, it's the name that talks about the compassion that Akash Baruch Hu has and how he gives all the shefa, he gives all the blessing, all the bounty into this world, he maintains this world, he sends a great amount of bounty to each of us and to the world in general. So when you take the name of, uh, of Havaya, that name, and you spell it out with, there's, if you spell each letter so that you have, uh, so, so that you have the, the hey would be hey aleph hey, you spell it out with the alephs, okay, if you do the math, hey aleph hey, uh, yud hey aleph hey, Vav Aleph Vav, Hey Aleph Vav, Hey Aleph Hey, there's different ways of spelling those combinations, like you don't have to spell the, the full letters, Hey, it doesn't have to be with a Hey Aleph Hey, there's different ways of spelling it, but if you spell it out with the Alephs, it comes out to the numerical value of 45, the same numerical value of Odom. So when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is sending this bounty, sending the Shefa from the name of Havaya, things are going 
proper, right, Hashem is maintaining the world in, in, in this way, this bountiful way, that's considered, Rabbi Nachman will say, Kaseder. That's when things in life are going the way they're supposed to go, the way you would imagine that they would proceed. That's the idea of Adam. Adam is, is the shame Ma, that's what it's called, Ma is 45, and uh, it, it means when Akash Baruch was maintaining the world in, this, in, the, in the straightforward way, the way of bounty, the way of blessing, and it's going Aleph, Dalit, Mem, like we said, it's going in the chronological order, everything is in the proper order, in, in the proper balance and everything like that. Now, as we said, there was Adam and then there was Chava. Chava, who was the, on the back of Adam, she was backwards, she was facing backwards, she's going to represent the opposite in life when you find things that are Shalom Kisader. How do you see this? You see this, first of all, in her name, which is Chava, which is a Ches, a Vav, and a He. So now instead of going in the chronological order, starting from one and going up, you're going backwards now. You're going from a, a eight, six, and five. And we call that Tashrak. That's the opposite order of the Aleph Beis. Uh, it's called Tashrak. And that's the idea of, of when things are going Shalai Kaseder. They're not going in the order that one would imagine. They're going, you know, you wake up in the morning and uh, you forgot to plug in the alarm clock. All these types of things in life that uh, you go to start the, uh, this happens to me all the time, you go to start the engine of the car and your kid left the door open and the battery's dead. And now, you know, you, you had everything planned out exactly, you know, to drop off everybody and be at work on time and, and there you go, the battery's dead. So, we have in life, there's this idea of HaKosh Baruch Hu, Ocha V'Ked and Tzartani, created the world with these two different ways. He created the world with a way of, of, of the proper order, the way when, when the bounty is coming down, which is the, the name of Adam, with uh, Havaya, things are going the way they should. And then you have the Chava, you have the Shaloi Kaseder, you have when things are not going the right way, they're going the opposite way, they're disorderly, there's chaos. We have these two concepts, HaKosh Baruch Hu created the world with both of these. The question is, why did he create the world this way? What can we do about it? Because oftentimes our lives are, are, are made very difficult by, by all this chaos. That we, right? we all, nobody wants chaos. Everyone wants to live a peaceful life. So why did Kosh Baruch create this? And how do we make peace of it? That's really what this lesson is going to be about. Reb Nassim, when he talks about this, he goes back to the story of, of Adam and Chava, right? These are the names that we have. He goes back to the original uh, creation of the world, the Maise Bereshis, and he talks over there about the existence of life in Gan Eden, right? Adam and Chava created, life was beautiful, everything was perfect. It says that all like the, the plantation, all the fruits and everything, everything grew perfectly. They didn't have to, they didn't have to work on, on, on the agriculture, they didn't have to uh, 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 get rid of all the weeds and all those, everything was created in life in a perfect way. The weather, the climate was perfect. They had everything that they needed. They didn't have to work. They were able to sit back and relax. Everything was in that orderly way that we all wished we could, you know, live that type of lifestyle. There was only one thing that Chava was told she wasn't allowed to do, and Adam and Chava both of them were told they weren't allowed to do, that was to eat from the eight Hadas. Right? There was a tree of knowledge of, 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 of good and evil. That one thing, they had everything they needed, they were living in paradise, everything was kaseder, was perfect. But that one thing, they were not allowed to partake in. And Rabbi Nelson relates this to our discussion over here. See, who was it that convinced Adam not to, who, could, who was the one that convinced Adam to eat from that forbidden fruit? From the Eitz Das? That was Chava. So the element in creation of the Shaloi Kaseder went and ruined the way things were supposed to be. That element got out of sync. Okay? Now, the, the idea of Chava, on a deeper level, Reb Nassim relates to uh, um, Malchus, which is Hashem's kingdomship. So actually, Rabbi Nachman brings down a Pasuk over here, when he talks about what the name of Chava means. The Pasuk is, we say it in Davnin, Yoim le yoim ebiyo oimer velayla le velayla le layla yichave das yichave is the same word as is chava okay it means to convey that's what it means the translation of the word is to convey if you look up Rashi on that verse Rashi explains the verse as follows he says that when you have a day it's light out and then it gets dark out and then you have another day and that process continues so like the fluctuations of the day and night they help people realize that there is Rabbeinu Shalom. There's a creator that created all of this. Because people say it's a new day, then it's night, and then Hashem brings out the sun again. That process of day and night, it's, it, it gives forth and conveys this knowledge that there's a creator of the world. 
And that actually, this name of, of Chava, okay, Chava is the, and it, her, she's known that she's identified with the, the Svira of Malchus. So there's ten spheres. Let's just give a very simple explanation for the spheres. People are familiar in general with the, the concept of the spheres. We'll just we'll explain it. There's basically we'll call them lights. There's these ten lights that a Kodesh Baruch Hu shines into the world, and we can only perceive a Kodesh Baruch Hu through these lights. Each one has a different attribute of Hashem. For example, Chesed, so Hashem's kindness, the way He deals with kindness. There's Gvura, where Akash Barko holds back. All of these ten lights are ways where we're able to understand, we're able to perceive godliness through the ten spheres of Akash Barko. Now, the bottom one that we're identified with Chava, okay, with the, the, the woman in the story, that one is Malchus. It's Akash Barko's kingdomship. And Rabbi Nachman explains Malchus, the difference between Malchus and the other nine, it's the, it's the bottom of the rung, it doesn't have any of its own light. The other ones, they all shine for the light. But Malchus, because it's on the bottom, it doesn't have to give over anything to any further spheres. So it only gets the light of the other nine spheres. So then what's its function? If it's not shining any light, what's the purpose of Malchus? So Rabbi Nachman says, you know, it's all based on the Zohar, Rabbi Nachman says, it's this idea that we're talking about, it conveys, Malchus conveys. So I'll give you an example of the way I understand this to work, right? We just said the Rashi. That if it's that because there's a fluctuation between night and day, therefore you understand that Kosh Baruchu created the world. Which means as follows if there was only light, then you wouldn't really appreciate what light is. Because there was darkness, there was night, and then Kosh Baruchu made a day, and that process continued, so the, the night actually brought out the day. You wouldn't understand there was day. The only way you know there's night and day is because you have the opposite. And the idea of Malchus is it's, it's compared to the moon. The moon doesn't have any of its own light either, right? But it shines the light of the sun. And if you look at the light, if you look at the sun itself, it's blinding. You can't stare at the sunlight. But if you look at the moon, then you could see the light of the sun, of the sun through looking at the moon. It can it can shine the moon the sun's light in a way that you can appreciate it. So what Malthus does is because there is a constriction involved, there's a darkness involved, like the moon, imagine the moon, think of the moon. Because there's this constriction, there's a hiddenness, there's a darkness, because of that, now through the Malchus it can reflect the light of all of the other nine spheres. So it's a, it's the, it, it conveys, Chava, she conveys knowledge. Malchus conveys all the knowledge of the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the knowledge of the light of the other nine spheres, so that we understand and appreciate them, and that is the purpose of, of Malchus. So now, Malchus is considered Shaloi Keseder. It's not the proper order of things, because the proper order of things, we said, is like when that light, when the, when the, the, the Chachma, when the light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we said as Adam is the name of as Ma 45, it's the bounty that Hashem sends. So we said that really is the proper way. When, when that light is shining down, that's the proper order. However, HaKadosh Baruch Hu created an opposite. He created a, a constriction and a darkness in order to appreciate that Chochmah, the knowledge of Hashem, the light of Hashem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to create darkness in order for us to appreciate that. So in fact, there is a purpose to the Keseder, to when things are going in the proper order, and Hashem is showing us, He's lighting the way, He's showing us everything in an orderly manner. And as we're going to see, we'll explain this more, He had to create a, a, a different type of force, a force of, of constriction, of darkness, in order to bring out that bounty, to bring that out into the world so that we could see that. Is that this is really the concept that this whole lesson is going to be based on, according to the way I understand it, the difference between Adam and Chava. Adam is the actual knowledge itself. Chava is the constrictions that were needed in order to convey that knowledge. It's the sun and the moon. It's orderliness and disorderliness. Is that clear? Just want to make sure before we go further. Everything is really based on that. Okay? So if that's clear, let's go back into the story that we started with Adam and Chava. So now, you had Chava now, who, she's that, the force in creation that is disorderly. She's that Shalom Keseder. So the, 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 and, and the Nachash comes now, the snake, right? And he confuses, he, he has an argument. He says, you know, you have all the power, the same power as Kodesh Baruch Hu. There's only a, a slight difference between you and, and Hashem. And Rashi brings it down, and he says, if you eat from the Eitz Hadas, if you'll eat from the Tree of Knowledge, you'll become just like Hashem. You'll be a Melech, you'll be a ruler, just like Hashem. 
That was his argument that Rashi explains. So Reb Nossin takes this and, and he explains our lesson according to what we understand now. The purpose of the Malchus, as we said, the purpose of the moon is to, re is to reflect the light of the sun. When the moon reflects the light of the sun, it brings out the fullness of creation. It's, 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 it shows creation, the perfection of creation, to the maximum extent. You need both of those elements, as we explained already, right? So it shows that Kajbo created the world, and he created everything with a proper balance, because that is the best way, that's the, 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 the best way to bring out the light of a Kajbo, to have those two different forces in the world. So therefore, <clears throat> when the moon serves the sun, everything is beautiful. But the snake now came and said, you know, if you eat from the tree of knowledge, then you'll be just like Hashem, you'll be a king. So what did Chava do? The disorderly element in the creation of the world went and separated itself from the system, from the proper order that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had set up. Instead of the disorderly element serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu to bring out the greatness of creation, to bring out God's kingdomship in full, Right? Instead of, 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 of Chava, of, of bringing that out, of conveying the knowledge, instead of that, she went and she took something for herself. It had nothing to do with Hashem. Hashem told her, he asked her, don't eat from this forbidden fruit. And she went and she ate from it. So now the disorderly element becomes disconnected with the orderly element of creation. And what happens when the disorderly element uh, becomes, becomes disconnected with the, order, with, the, with the orderly element? That's when you get chaos. Now the disorderly element has no purpose anymore in creation. Its purpose was, was all messed up. Everything was all mixed up now. Because she's only supposed to, her, her, her the, the hiddenness and the constriction is only supposed to reveal the light of Akash Baruch Hu. But now when she talks something for herself, and she's self-serving now, she's not in the, in, in the alignment, the sun and the moon are no, longer, are, no, no, are no longer aligned properly, so now she's not reflecting the light of Akash Baruch anymore. She's not conveying the knowledge of Hashem, she's not conveying the light of Akash Baruch anymore. It's self-serving. The snake said, do this, so you'll become a king just like God. In other words, it's not for God's kingdom, kingdomship, it's not for God's malchus anymore, it's for her own self-fulfillment. It's a self-fulfilling uh, constriction now. And when it's a self-fulfilling constriction, what ended, up, what ended up happening was now she brought the, the, the disorderly element into creation in a way where everything became chaos. And when, where we find our lives today, we live chaotic lives or because of this, because instead of the chaos, the disorderliness serving the orderliness, now it was just separated from that, and it just became a thing within it, a thing to itself, because it was self-fulfilling. So in the parsha you see this play out because afterwards Adam is cursed that he has to go work hard and things don't grow the way they used to grow. He's got to he's got to break everything down. He's got to fix everything. He didn't have to fix anything before. He could just everything just grew perfectly. He was able to sit back and relax. He had to go to work and work hard because this disorderly element it became self-fulfilling. It was it was separated from God's kingdomship from the malchus of Hashem, and now the whole world this element of chaos. Became, the world became upside down, and the element of chaos became very prominent in the, in, 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 the, in, in the world that we live in. And that's why we find in our own lives now that there's so much chaos. It was all, this is the source of all the chaos that we find in our own lives. And really our purpose is to bring the world back into the proper order where the, the Shaloi Kaseda, where the, the, the element of, of, of of, of chaos or disorderliness actually fulfill it, it serves the element of of proper order. That's actually what the purpose of our lives is now and what Rabbi Nachman is going to teach us is how do we do that? How do we now that this story happened that Chava went and she she took the forbidden fruit and she brought the world into a state of chaos how do we fix all of that? Everything in our lives when we as we said is when you turn that car on and the battery's dead and, and, and when you know when, the, when you miss the bus and, and everything that happens that you weren't planning on doing all of this is experiencing that same act. These are, these are the ramifications of that same act in the story of original creation that we all have to deal with in our own lives. Okay? So, Rabbi Nachman brings a, uh, a verse. It says, Ki b'chol ha-goyim u-b'chol ma-chusam en It's a verse in uh, Yermio. It says, because with all of the knowledge of the nations, right, there's, there's a tremendous, every single person is born with a, 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 a tremendous amount of knowledge, right? Everyone is smart, everyone has ideas. 
they, they have issues in life, and they, they think that they know how to deal with it. So Rabbi Nachman says, when that knowledge is, it's the knowledge of the nations. It's not a knowledge of Hashem. We spoke about Adam being the, the Gematra 45, being the wisdom, the light, the bounty that Hashem sends down to us. That's the Chachma, that's the wisdom of Hashem. It's represented by the letter Yud, and the Kabbalah will see why in a second. So that's one type of knowledge that we spoke about, Adam. The knowledge of Hashem, the light of Hashem, the bounty of Hashem coming down and sustaining the world in an orderly way. Then there's the Chachma, the chachma of the Goyim, the, the wisdom of the, non, of the non-Jewish nations, of the nations. It means to say, not the knowledge of Hashem. Now, of course, there is Chachma, there is certain wisdom there. We're not saying there's not wisdom. But he, he, he understands that this passage, he says, Bechol machusim en In all of their malchus, there's none like you. And he explains like this, when the malchus now, God's kingdomship, right? Which we said is the constriction, it's chava, it's the shalai kaseder, all these things, that's the way Rabbi Nachman does, he ties everything in together. So now when all of these constrictions, the darkness, the nighttime, right? And that's why it's the moon, the moon and the night, all these things relate to each other. When that whole element became separated now, from the orderly part of creation. So what do you have now? You have a constriction. You're dealing with all these constrictions in your life, but you don't have the light of Hashem anymore to shine into it, to make sense of all of it. You're lacking that now. So he says, based on this verse, he says that you have the, 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 the non-Jewish name. There, there is Chochmah. Everyone has Chochmah, right? But he says, But in their Malchus, there are none like you. In there, because they've taken the malchus, they've taken the, constri- the constrictions, and they separated it from Hashem. So they have now all the constrictions, but the constrictions are all self-fulfilling. There's no purpose to them anymore, because they don't have Hashem's light to make purpose of all them. So you have, well you have, imagine the light, okay, that's like, the light is always called Or. The Chochmah, the wisdom of Hashem is always called light. And then you have Kalim, you have vessels. And, and what you're supposed to do is you need a certain size vessel to contain a certain amount of light. Like if you had a pitcher and you fill too much water, you, the, the pitcher can't hold the water. So the way Akash Baruch Hu runs this world is he gives us the constrictions, okay? And that constriction is able to hold a certain amount of the wisdom of Hashem. But when you have the constrictions without the wisdom of Hashem, so then your life is terrible because you have all these constrictions but they serve no purpose. You end up only with the malchus, you end up only with the thing that's supposed to convey the knowledge, but you don't have the knowledge itself. I mean, Achman compla- he, he compares this to, let's say you had a, 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 a body part. A person has a physical body part, they have an arm, but they, they're, they, they, they're, uh, their arm, they can't use it anymore. They have some kind of physical problem with their arm, right? So he says, what purpose is there to the arm? You have this keli, you have a vessel, but you can't use it, so what purpose is there to that? If you have today, you have like computers, so if you have um, all this incredible computer technology, but you don't have a motherboard, you don't have some way to control it, you can have the greatest technology in the world, but it, it's purposeless unless you have the, the light. So Hashem, in order to hold the light, He gave us a certain amount of constrictions, right? And, and, and you need those constrictions to hold the light, but if you have the constrictions without the light, you have all the problems without the answers. So when a person thinks that they're smart enough to, to, and, and, and they live their life based on their own ideas, their own self-fulfilling ideas, they end up with all the constrictions and all the problems, but there's no purpose to any of that. And they end up with a, 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 a terrible chaos. I'll give you a simple example I thought of. Okay, I think it's a, a proper example. Shalom Bias is, is a great example for all of this. Let's say you have a person, they're really, a, the, the, it's just an example. So. Uh, the husband is really striving to grow spiritually. He's really, really, really trying, and he's learning, and he's diving, he's doing all kinds of things. And then he comes home, and his wife starts telling him all of her problems. You know, the kids did this, and they did that, and you, you messed this up, and all these things going on, right? So now, if he looks at his wife in this case scenario, she's the shaloika center. She's the element that's not orderly. She's the constriction. If he looks at, at her and says, what do I need this for? She's driving me crazy. What's the purpose of, 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 of her holding me back like this? If he looks at that, so he's got the problem, he has the constriction, and then he's using his own knowledge because he's saying, what do I need it for? I'm smarter. I don't need this, right? So he has the constriction, all the problems, they serve no purpose. So what is his life going to be? 
his life will basically be hell, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, she's just telling him what to do all day and he doesn't see any purpose. He has a problem without any solution, okay? He's got the moon. He has a constriction without the light of the sun because he's using his own seichel, his own chachma. He's not, he doesn't have that alignment that we spoke about before. However, let's say the husband says, you know what? The Karshbar will put tremendous chachma, tremendous wisdom into the creation of the world. He's sending her here as as we said, there's two elements of creation. There is an orderly element, and there is a disorderly element. He's sending me these, these constrictions, these restrictions. He's sending them to me for a purpose. <clears throat> so if a person looks at it like that, they say, you know what, maybe right now I need to slow down. Maybe I'm going too fast. Maybe I'm going to have too much light. And he looks at it like that, then the person can embrace the situation, and the situation actually propels him forward spiritually. So it become, this becomes of this situation becomes a vessel to hold his spiritual light, and there's a purpose to all of this. So it becomes a tremendous opportunity for growth with the Kadosh Baruch Hu. But that's only when he has the chokma, he has the wisdom of Hashem. When he has the wisdom of Hashem, when Hashem's hand is guiding his life, when a person recognizes that. So you have Adam and Chava, that's the way Kosh Baruch Hu intended to create the world. However, when a person takes the, everything Hashem created and uses his own knowledge, and he says, I'll do what I want with what Kosh Baruch Hu created, and I'll deal with all these problems in the way that I want, I know best, so he takes the element of the Shaloi Kaseder, he takes the element that's not in order, and he separates it from Hashem, from Adam, from Baal, from Chachma, from Light, from all the Beldi, from all those things. He separates it, and he ends up with the problem, the constriction, without any solution. Okay? So I'm going to read you Rabbi Nachman's words on that, and what we can do about it, and how we know that it's happening. He says... When a person takes Chava, this Malchus, the constriction for themselves, and they say, I will rule, then they separate the Malchus, they separate the constriction from Hashem, from Akash Baruch Hu. And then they don't have any Shlemis, they don't have any uh, fullness. He says one line, if I can't find it, I'll just tell it to you. And he says that a person has to know, I can't find it right now, but he says a person has to know that when they feel that things are not going their way, he says that's because they have geus, they have gaiva. When a person feels that things are not going their way, it's because they have gaiva. Because what have they done? They've now taken the constrictions to themselves. If they would be living a life with the knowledge that everything is the hand of Hashem guiding it, then they would never feel the opposing rots and the opposing willpower. Okay, so let me explain this in terms of, of, of tshuva, which is really what this lesson is about. <clears throat> a person decides they want to do tshuva, especially this time of year, El, and they set forth a certain plan in serving the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and they decide what they want to do. And things just don't go according to the way that they intended. They make different Kabbalahs, they accept to do various things, and, and, and almost from the beginning, right, we usually find that things get in the way, we get busy with other things. So what, what, what happens is that we feel, we feel terrible, right? We want to do something, we're trying to serve a Kaddish Baruch Hu. We want to do something, and we feel, we feel torn inside. So now we said that Chachma is represented by the letter Yud. And Rabbi Nachman says a beautiful thing. If you take the letter Yud, which is uh, Yud uh, Vav uh, Dalid, Yud Vav Dalid, if you take that letter and you, you turn it upside down, you turn it into the Shaloi Kaseder, you get the word Devai. Devai means pain. So the Chachma of Hashem, when a person has the Chachma, has the light of Hashem, like we said, his life is beautiful, it's peaceful, it's, it's full. But when you take the Yud and you think, I know better, this is how I'm going to do tshuva, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, and this thing that happened to me that I wasn't planning, I, I'm, going to, I, I'm not going to pay any attention to it. You take Yud and you flip it backwards, you get Devai, you get pain. When a person has a... a when a person has their own desires and they conflict with those of Akash Barhu, that's when you have this internal war raging within yourself that we spoke about. And Rabbi Nachman says that's the sibin, that's the sign. If a person feels they want to do something and they, they just keep on wanting it and wanting it and they're in so much pain because it's not happening and they're beginning to get sad or depressed because of it, you, you, it means that you took the Chachma of Hashem and, and 
you, and you totally did away with it. You're using your own chachma, you're using your own knowledge. So it goes from yud, from the light of Hashem, from, from, from that ma, and it becomes devai, it becomes pain. And Rabbi Nachman says the idea is that it's a sign that you have to humble yourself, and you need to realign yourself with this chachma. You need to say, Akash Baruch Hu knows best, his hand is guiding my entire life. And the reason why I'm feeling this pain now is because my, my desires, they're self-fulfilling. I'm taking the mouth, I'm taking the constrictions, and I'm bringing it over to my own life. They're not serving a Kosh Baruch Hu. When something serves a Kosh Baruch Hu, then it just reflects the light, it reflects the Chacham of Hashem. Then my will becomes the same will as Hashem's will. When I think I know better, and I use my own knowledge, my own Chacham, so I get from Yud, I get the Vai, I get opposing, I get a conflict within myself and my life becomes uh, very, very difficult. And we have that idea on, 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 on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is, is in Cholish Tishrei. And Tishrei also is almost the same letters as Tashrak, right? We said Tashrak is the opposite order of the Aleph base. Okay, we said Chava is the opposite order. Tashrak is Tov, Shin, Resh, Kof. If you start the Aleph base from the wrong side, so to speak, it spells out Tashrak. Tishrei is Tov, Shin, Resh. It's also the opposite order. And what we're trying to do in this Chodesh, we're trying to do in this month, we're trying to fix that original problem that brought all the chaos into the world. So each one of us within ourselves are trying to bring the world back into alignment. So every single time that we feel that something is, is opposing our will, it's a sign from Hashem that you need to humble yourself and look for the guiding hand of Hashem. And by doing that, by humbling yourself, you are bringing your life and the, and the world itself back into alignment with Hashem. You're bringing that moon back into alignment with the sun so that the sun can once again shine the light of the moon. Rab Nassim says that's why on, on, on Rosh Hashanah, I think this is especially true with Uman, you know, there's so many things. People have great ideas of how they'd like to serve a Klesh Parhu, how they'd like their Uman to go. Everyone comes with their list of what they like to experience and, experience, and it can become very overwhelming, and you start to get that feeling of divide, you get that pain within yourself. You have these opposing, I want to do this, I want to do that. And really, there's a level, there's an element over there that's very self-fulfilling. Are you doing this for a Klesh Baruch Hu's sake? Are you doing this for your own sake? If you're doing it for Akash Baruch Hu's sake, then you understand that the Chachma of Hashem is guiding the entire universe, and He wants it to be exactly like this. He wants your Rosh Hashanah to look like that. He wants your Uman to look like that. So when we come here and we get overwhelmed, again, it's a sign from Akash Baruch Hu that we have to take a deep breath, and we have to understand that Akash Baruch Hu is he's running this world. He created an element of orderliness, of Seder, and He created an element of Shaloi Seder, of, of, of disorderliness, of chaos. And what he wants to do is bring the alignment back by us turning to Hashem, looking at Him, having a muna, and, and, and doing whatever we can in the situation with the knowledge and the simcha that this is all from Akash Baruch Hu. This is His Chachma that's guiding the universe, and we have to have the Malchus. Malchus is a muna. Malchus is we, we, we take that constriction only to, to, to shine and to bring out the light of Hashem. We don't use it for ourselves in any way whatsoever. And it, it, it's, it's especially applicable in Uman, as you see, there's so many things going on, there's so many distractions, and people have ideas, they come here and they become overwhelmed very easily. But we say the Achtara, that we crown Hashem, on Rosh Hashanah is the day that we crown Hashem as our king. And in the breast of verse say that the Achtara takes place in Uman. Uman is the place where the king is, is where we put the crown on the king. So it's especially true over here that we need all these distractions, we need all of this chaos, because by humbling ourselves and looking towards Hashem over here, looking for his Chachma, looking for that Yud, by doing that over here, we are bringing Hashem's Malchus back into its Shlemus, into its perfection. We're taking the constriction and we're using it to, to shine the beautiful light that Akash Baruch Hu has. And we're doing that on Rosh Hashanah, which is certainly going to have a hashpa, it's going to have a tremendous effect on the entire world for the rest of the year. And uh, one last point that, 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 that the, 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 uh, the Rebbe brings over here, he brings a point and he says, he relates this to, which we have in Torah Vav also, these two elements of tshuva, the Bak Bishoy, Bak Bishoy. I'll explain it, but he says, if a person were to be blessed with riches, right, to become very wealthy, so really a person should, should, should appreciate that, wow, the Kosh Baruch has given me all this money, thank you so much Hashem, they should feel close to Hashem, right, because Hashem, Hashem is the source of all goodness, He's given me 
riches, whether you know whether monetary, whether it's money, or whether it's spiritual, different levels of spirituality. He's given them to me, and I should be able to turn to Hashem and say to Hashem, thank you so much Hashem, I should feel so close to Hashem. He says, and yet, what do you find? Most of the time when people are blessed with richness, right, they often forget about Hashem. And it becomes a very, the money, the wealth becomes a very self-fulfilling type of a thing. So, because of that, what a Kosh Baruch Hu often does in our lives is instead of allowing us just to be able to grow spiritually and just for things to just go in a very orderly manner where things just proceed, you know, with ease, instead of that, oftentimes what Hashem does is he, he turns it upside down. He makes it very difficult for us to grow spiritually. He, he pushes us down. We have nephilos. We fall oftentimes for that reason. And the purpose of that is that it, even spirituality, okay, if, if, if the spirituality is not bringing us closer to Hashem, then even spirituality has no purpose, right? Spirituality and, and levels and, and, and growth, they're only worthwhile if they bring us closer to Hashem. The, the, the greatest thing, the greatest tining, the greatest enjoyment that there is, and what we'll have in Olam Haba, is a, is a tining of Hashem, of, of godliness. We're able to, to appreciate Hashem's godliness. That's the greatest tining, the greatest enjoyment that there is in the world. If something's spiritual, but it doesn't bring us closer, it becomes a self-fulfilling thing, that's the total opposite of what Hashem wants. So Hashem will oftentimes throw us down in order to humble us. He'll use this element of the Shaloi Kaseder, of the chaos in spiritual, in spiritual terms. He'll do that in order so that we humble ourselves and we realize that everything is from Hashem everything, and we have the proper appreciation, the proper appreciation for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that's why so often we find that we have Yeridas, we so often find that things don't go according to plan. Things don't go the way we would like them to go. Every single time that happens, it's not a, there's no chaos in that whatsoever. It's an order. It's like there's the Aleph base, there's the Aleph base Goldalit, but Tashrak, the opposite, <coughs> it's also an order. There is an order to everything. There's no real thing as chaos. Everything is really coming from Akash Baruch It's all out of his love because he wants to bring us back to him, back close to him, and he understands that we need this chaos in our lives constantly to remind us and to remind us to, to be humble and to use everything for its purpose. So when we're able to humble ourselves and say, look, I feel like I'm in the mud right now, I'm in the dirt. I feel like I wanted to have an Elul, I wanted to have a Rosh Hashanah, I wanted everything to go in a certain way, I wanted to, to make a spoilers for hours and to feel connected and to do, do this or that, and, and things, we have just a total change of plan. Chas v'shalom, there's, there's, there's nothing in there because Hashem doesn't want us. There's no element of that whatsoever. It's a Kosh Baruch Hu knowing that we need this constriction right now. We need this level of Shaloi Kaseder, of things not proceeding in an orderly way. We need that so that later on we'll be able to be blessed with that richness, whether, whether it's, it's actual money riches or whether it's, it's spiritual riches. And that's the opportunity when we humble ourselves and we turn back to Hashem, right? That's actually the opportunity that builds the vessel so that later on, Akash Baruch can fill that vessel. He can bless us with that richness. And what happens is so often we become distracted by all of that and we give up. And it's, 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 it's really a, a huge mistake. It's a huge error. Rav Nassim says that the main way Akash Baruch leads the world is in this manner today. The Baki B'Shoiv. Most of the time we're in this retreating kind of motion. Most of the time we're in this kind of, a little bit of, chaos type of motion, but it's a constant reminder of Hashem, Hashem is reminding us again and again and again that we need to just humble ourselves and appreciate Him, and we need to find the Kosh Baruch Hu, even over here, even over here, no matter how far we feel, we can find the Kosh Baruch Hu. and by finding Him over there, that's the only way we can build the vessel to be able to hold the light when we're able to grow. The quicker we're able to appreciate this and the quicker we begin to live that way, the quicker Kosh Baruch Hu can actually come and lead the world in the Kaseder in, that, in, that, in, in, in the orderly type of way and bless us with all the types of things that we are really looking for. So Rosh Hashanah is a great opportunity really to work on this. It's really the time of year. I, like, as I said, I, I began in Chodesh Elo, Rosh Chodesh Elo, I began studying this Torah. And I thought about it every single day, basically. I made a spoiler about it every single day. And every single time in my life, there was something 
that like I, I felt an internal conflict, something was bothering me. It was a reminder from Hashem. I took a second, I reflected on it, especially during the spell. I would go through my whole day and say, what's bothering me? And it was a reminder to turn back to Hashem and appreciate that this is exactly the way it's supposed to be. There's tremendous chachm over here. Kosh Baruch Hu is, is guiding things in this way. And, and I said, I need to humble myself. It's because I think I know better. I think my life should look differently than it, than it looks. And I, I took a deep breath and reminded myself that, no, this is exactly how Kosh Baruch wants it. And I found it very difficult a lot of times because it's really that. When, when, when you do this exercise, when you'll practice it, you'll see, you'll say to yourself, but how can it be? I know that it should be like this or like that. And I know this is wrong. And, and you know, especially most of us are pre perfectionists. And we want, we're working on a certain project. We put in all of our heart and all of our effort. And we want the results to look a certain way. And, and, and then it things just don't go according to plan. And we have to expect that, no, a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants the world to have this element of Shalot Yisader, of, of disorderliness, of chaos. A Kodesh Baruch Hu wants that element. If we re rely on His Chachman, His wisdom, there's a purpose to this. And this is what the world needs. This is what my life needs. <coughs> and, and, and by doing that, by focusing, we're able to get rid of all of those negative emotions and live a, a, a very peaceful and happy life. You know, you have the story of the the Chacham and the Tam, the, uh, the, the wise man and the simpleton, one of Rabbi Nachman's famous stories. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. Anyone who hasn't read it should read it. Um, but at one stage of the story, so you know, the, the, the wise man is someone who has all these types of thoughts. He's very sophisticated. He thinks he knows everything. He thinks he can explain everything. He doesn't have that element of Amuna where he's willing to take a step back and accept that a Kosh Baruch Hu is guiding the world. So his whole life is chaos because nothing ever goes. You know, as soon as he gets somewhere, he thinks, oh, I need something else. He never has any peace in his life. His mind is always racing. He's always coming up with the next idea. He never has any peace. Whereas the, simple, the simpleton, right, he's a shoemaker. He doesn't have, you know, a glorious job. He makes simple shoes. And, you know, the, the funny part of the story is his shoes, Rabbi Nachman says, are, they have three corners. He can't make a normal shoe. They have three corners. And if you think of the story, that's really what our life is. Our life is a three-cornered life. We all want to make these perfect shoes. We want to have, you know, the, the I, I don't know what the most expensive pair of shoes are, but we all want to have these beautiful, beautiful shoes. And we're all trying, and we're so upset that we can't make these perfect shoes. And in our eyes, you know, who, who appreciates a pair of shoes that is three-cornered? It's ridiculous, right? So our whole life, we're trying to make everything into the perfect pair of shoes. But Akash Baruch is saying, no, I created this world. It actually says in the Pasuk, Ochr, backwards and forwards I created the world. Gosh Baruch created this world with a very specific purpose that there's an element of Shaloi Kaseda, there's an element of disorderliness in the world, and there's a, a tremendous, tremendous purpose to that. And therefore we have to accept, if we're going to live fulfilled lives, if we're going to grow, if we're going to be able to do tshuva, to try to find Hashem in every part of our lives and everything we experience, we have to understand that my life is the life of a three-cornered shoe. That's what my life is all about. When I can take a three-quartered shoe and say, that's a Kosh Baruch Hu's three-quartered shoe, he understands that that's the way a shoe has to look right now for me. When I could do that, then a Kosh Baruch Hu could, could go up and start blessing me with, with ever higher levels of, of his Chachma. And, 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 and I, I bring, I take all of the like you said, I take all of the chaos and I bring meaning to it. I bring meaning to my whole life. I bring meaning to the whole world. I'm able to rectify that, that act that Chava went, the disorderly part of the world, she went and she, she, she changed the configurations of things were. I'm able to do that. So I give everyone a bracha on Rosh Hashanah. This is the time where we're able to do that. Rav Nassim says it's a time of just Tmimu Subshitas, of utter simplicity. We go to Shul, we open up the Siddur, we just turn to Hashem, we do whatever we can do. We say as many tefillahs as possible. We don't have to have any kinds of plans of any deep things. You know, we, we don't even learn that much. We just go to shul like simple people and we beg Hashem, we say, Klesh Baruch I want to, I want to serve you, please help me, help me be your, your, your Evid again, help me be your son again, I want a year of just being able to serve you. And that's what we do in all the prayers, we just call out to Hashem with utter simplicity and we stop trying to think that we know everything and we can fix everything. We turn to Hashem, we just act like simple, good Jews. That's exactly what a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants. That's the prerequisite for reaching any spiritual goals in life. We should all be Zoycha, that we should have a Rosh Hashanah like that, where we, where we go with the Tmimu Subshitas of Rabbi Nachman, the simplicity of Rabbi Nachman, and should, it should bring us the bracha for a beautiful year of Shafa, bracha, and slacha for us, for Gans Klal Yisrael, Amen. 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 So, so questions for Rabbi Katz, please. Rabbi Katz. <laughs> yes. Can you explain a little bit about what you
the way I explained it was that that in order to bring out, uh, we said like if a day and a night, if if it was always light, right? So that you wouldn't you wouldn't appreciate the difference between day and night. You wouldn't appreciate what light is. So oftentimes you have to have the opposite. It's it's it gives you contrast in life. If you have no contrast in life, you can't really grow spiritually. You need to have the contrast. That's what it means that it's like the vessel. It holds the light. You need the opposite. You need the darkness to understand what light is. If you only have light, then you don't appreciate it, you don't even understand what it is. If you only have darkness, you only have bitterness, and you can't see anything. You have, sorry, when you have the exact measure of darkness and light, when it's used in the way Hashem created with Hashem's Chachma, so you have just enough, just enough constriction in order to be able to hold the exact amount of light. And so everything Hashem sends to us, everything we experience, is really that opportunity to build these vessels so that we can later be blessed with the bounty. Instead, because we think we, we know better, we don't understand that there's tremendous chachma in this equation. Kosh Baruch Hu is running the world in a certain exact way. So we separate the element of constriction that Malchus were calling. We separate that from Kosh Baruch Hu's chachma, and then we only have the vessel, we only have the constriction, we don't have the light, and we can't deal with it. And we, 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 we end up with a, a, an internal conflict that's very, very bitter. And, and that's what Rabbi Nachman is saying, that's a sign that you have to humble yourself and bring everything back into the proper alignment. And then you'll be able to appreciate the Kosh Baruch Hu's light. Yeah. Um, I think, um, my thoughts are around the famous thing you maybe um, another of Rabbi Nachman's teachings. Sure. And um, one of the things he teaches, um, and one of the things we have to be careful about when we talk about when we mention the Bala, is gender. In as much as Marcus can be female, Marcus can also be male. They tend to try to put it up. We say the woman is female, but we say the woman is double a man. You know, so we need to be careful a little bit. But we're not saying, you know, something about men and women. It's not. It's not exactly. Actually, in this lesson, we're all like the female element, basically. <laughs> that's exactly, we're relating to the female that's element. That's exactly what I, what I was. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. And in fact, one of the things that the rabbi talks about is when us, when Adam and Chava. If you compare the Chokhmah, which Adam has, with the Bina, which is also the, the, the kind of wider understanding of the context, like which Chava brought, yeah. how does she bring it? She brings it by doing something apparently chaotic and disorderly, it's exactly what you're saying. It says that her legs, as it were, when we're talking in a very strange language here, but her feet went down to some extraordinary place and they, they brought up this extraordinary power of of extra truth. Yeah. Now this is disorganized. This is not this is not the organization. The clock means means when you understand some I understand, dump it's the it's the requirement of uh, you know Einstein's uh, picking a <coughs> in the beach and, it, and suddenly you remember dump he realizes a mathematical equation has been working on for five years. Now that's orderly. But but Bina it, you have to go all over the place here. You have to have context and the two have to come together. So what she brings is, it, in, it says that she she went down to a certain place where Adam didn't go. And in doing that, the plus is that she brings up a, a far greater, wider, broader, uh, apparently disorderly, but it, it gives context to the understanding of Hoffman. Without that, what use is your Hoffman? I know this, and I know that, and I know that, yeah, but what's the context? You need the context. So it's actually the cover that brings the... In the context. So, really, that, that, I hope, I think that connects with what you were saying. How many women are here? <laughs> uh, none, I hope. Exactly, <laughs> I hope. Should yeah. say, what would be should say practical I hope. Advice 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 advice. Advice. Is a woman is a woman is a woman is a woman is But they don't have to be here. She has a way of doing stuff. We're the ones who lead us. You're a spiritual growth, not just the way of life. And um, the practical way of doing that is, is Rabbi Nachman's is, is chazkus, Rabbi Nachman's encouragement. The most, the, you know, in, 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 in Torah Reish Pei Beis, the, the uh, Torah of Zamra, it's the only Torah that, that Rabbi Nachman says you should go with these teachings throughout at every point in your life. You should always go with these teachings. What you're able to do is when you take the encouragement of Rabbi Nachman, right? So no matter what you're going through in life, 
If you go with those teachings, you live with those teachings, you can apply his encouragement to be able to find the Kaddish Baruch even in the most difficult situations. That's really what we're talking about. Tshuva, the, the, the part that we have a lot of difficulty with is we don't feel like we're doing Tshuva because everything looks so bleak, everything looks so dark. We get stuck with this, the constriction. We, don't under, we, we just look at the constriction as a thing within itself. We don't see the bigger picture. But all of the breaths of teachings, all of Rabbi Nachman's teachings, they teach us how to find encouragement in every situation so that we say no. This is actually preparing my future ascent. This is this is building the vessel I need in order to be able to hold the light. All of Rabbi Nachman's teachings work in that way. So I would I would definitely concentrate on on teachings that have to do with Rabbi Nachman's chaskus, the sefer we have, the famous breast of sefer, it's Meshivas Nefesh, restore my soul. If you if you if you study a few minutes of that sefer every day, you'll see that you your, your whole everything will be tshuva. Your whole life, everything will be an opportunity to come closer to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. It's an incredible sefer. And uh, if you're not learning it already, I would definitely encourage you to, to study it. That would encourage to want to accept. Absolutely. It shows you how there's more to this than meets the eye. How there's an opportunity of growth, how this is for my benefit. We, we, the, our problem is, it's not that we don't want to grow, it's not that we don't want to accept, it's that we, we think there's no purpose in these things. We think even worse that Hashem is trying to harm us or He doesn't like us. That, that's what a lot of people really in the world walk around thinking that Kosh Baruch has like these two faces, God forbid, it's like the kind and then there's like the uh, rageful, you know, vengeful uh, type of being. A lot of people unfortunately have this perception. Really what, what, and what I tried to say was that even, you know, all the chaos that he's sending to us, it's just a wake-up call. It's a Kosh Baruch trying to get us to realign with his light. That's all it is because he loves us and, he, and, and, and he wants us to do that. Um, but it, we, we, we get distracted and we don't understand the message properly and we end up just taking the harshness of it without the, 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 the real purpose behind it. Yeah. Which is it? Nefesh. Restore my soul, we translate it as. Where does the Yitzhak Rav get into this? It's like a triangle. Adam, Baba, and the Nefesh. It's a triangle. Right. Yeah, so the Yitzhak uses this function of the world that Kosh Baruch Hu created, which is the constriction, the Levana, the Malchus, all these things we spoke about, the Laila, the darkness, all these types of... It, he uses this constriction of Hashem is an opportunity to pounce on you, is an opportunity to distract you. Because Hashem is hidden now, because in order to have constriction, uh, you have to have a certain element of hiddenness, so that gives opportunity for the Yitzhar now to come into the picture and, and, and push you away from Hashem, distract you from Hashem. Yes, you can stand for the tzaddik.